In the first video, we introduced something called the integer, and it's a variable type that holds whole numbers. And it can be very helpful. The only question is, how large of a number can we hold in an integer? Is there a limit? And actually, there is. The amount of memory only allows for a number between about negative 2 billion and positive 2 billion. So if you are using a number between that range, it's perfectly fine to use just a standard integer. But what if you wanted to store a larger number? Let's say you wanted to store a much larger number like the number of stars in a specified area of space. Well, that's a larger number than 2 billion. So if we have a standard integer declaration right now, which is what we have here, this would allow us to do the, the standard 2 billion to 2 billion range. So what we can do is we can actually modify this int to be something called a long int. And this actually stretches the size of the range. And if you notice that the printf statement has also been updated to have an L in front of the D, which means long decimal, or the, it, it's the type for a long int. Now what if you need an even larger number? Well, you can write long, long int, and that actually is a longer long int. And the, you can see that the updated type is there as well. But how much longer is this actually? How much more can we store? Well, the answer to this actually depends if you're compiling for a 64-bit machine or a 32-bit machine. The size of the variable can vary between these two. So if I have a 32-bit machine, like the Ubuntu distro we were actually using, a long int is actually the same size as a normal int. So that doesn't actually make any difference at all. It's still two, negative 2 billion to positive 2 billion. But a long, long int is actually much longer, and it lets us work from negative 9 quintillion to positive 9 quintillion. If you're on a 64-bit machine, the numbers are slightly different. Both of them for a long int and a long, long int are 9 quintillion. So our Ubuntu distro that we've been using is a 32-bit operating system. So if we recall from the slides, the long int is the same as a normal int, and this should fail. So let's try and compile this. The reason why this should fail is that this number here is larger than 2 billion. It's actually 4 billion. And so this long int shouldn't be able to hold it but this long, long int should. So let's see what happens when we run this program. So we compile this, we get a few warnings. I'll come back to these warnings in a bit, but right now all we care about is actually what happens when we run this program. When we run this program, you notice that this number is not 4 billion. And the reason why is because it is so large that it actually causes the int to roll over back to the negative side. And that's why we get this large number right here. And so we know that this is not actually very accurate to what we want it to be. So this is not something we would want to do on purpose. Here is the normal number and it's stored correctly within a long, long int. Because we're on a 32-bit system, you want to use the long, long int when you want the 19 quintillion range. As for these warnings, why is this saying this? This actually goes back to a C standard and it has to do with writing 4 billion just in standard C. Right now, C is assuming that this is an integer, but the problem is, is these 4 billion is on its own is obviously not able to fit within a standard integer. So you have to say that this literal is actually a long, long type. To do this, you write 4 billion and then you just write LL after it. And we do this and it will actually remove the warnings because it will tell that this is actually a 4 billion in a long, long type. Now this will still cause an error here because eventually this gets converted back into a standard long int and rolls over, but this removes those warnings. So if you ever see these warnings in your programming, you can remove them by just writing long long if it's a long long 
or you can write a standard long, which is a capital L, or an unsigned, which we'll get to, is a U. Now that's what happens on a 32-bit system. This is a 64-bit system. This is my Mac, and this is the exact same code that we were using besides those LLs. Um, and so let's see what happens when we run this. And as we saw, this is a 64-bit system, so the long and the long, long int are both the 19 quintillion range, and so our 4 billion is saved correctly and printed out correctly. So it's a weird difference between them, but the rule of thumb is if you wanted to use a number that's greater than 2 billion or less than 2 billion, you should just use a long, long int, because no matter which type of machine you're compiling, you'll get the range that is negative 9 quintillion to positive 9 quintillion. Now imagine if you needed even more space, you needed to store a larger number. Well, there isn't another type of variable we can use. C only allows to have the long, long. But there is something else you can do if you know that you only need positive numbers. You can unsign a variable. Half of the memory used for a variable goes to positive numbers. Half of the memory goes to negative numbers. So if you know that you only need positive numbers, you can give all of the memory used to the positive number space, which actually doubles the amount of space, which actually doubles the range on the positive end. So if I have our standard int here, and it's from negative 2 billion to positive 2 billion, if I write unsigned in front of it and you notice that the format specifier is now u for unsigned this will allow us to update our range to from 0 to positive 4 billion so that gives you a little bit more space on the positive end but you just can't store any negative numbers the same applies to the long int as well as the long long int you just have to include the LLU or the LU in the format specifier because U is now used for unsigned. So how much more does this give us for the long and long long ints? Well, as we said before, it depends on if you're on a 32-bit or 64-bit. So if we're on a 32-bit operating system, an unsigned long int is the same as an unsigned int. So that gives us a 0 to 4 billion. And for a unsigned long, long int, it gives us 0 to 18 quintillion, which is a big number. And also for 64-bit, as we know, the numbers, both of them would be 0 to 18 quintillion. As a side note, you can also say signed int numbers of stars, which is something you won't do very often since most variables are signed by default but you can specify it for, it for it to be signed. And notice how, because it's a normal int variable, the format specifier is still %d. So what if you wanted to go the other way and you knew that you are going to be using a small number and you don't need to use all of the space? Well, you can declare integers as being short to save some memory. Um, in contemporary systems, it doesn't it's not as important because you have lots of memory, but if you're working on smaller embedded systems or r things where memory is more confined, you can use short integers which will hold between negative 32,000 and positive 32,000. And of course for unsigned short integers, it can hold from 0 to 65,000. And so this is an example of a short int integer used. and the format specifier is actually the exact same as a normal int. You don't have to make any difference to say that it's short.